Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a good spooky season so far. I've already been putting up my decorations. Decorations actually went up on the 1st of October this month. Usually I get it up a little bit sooner, but I don't know, I was feeling lazy this month. So I was gonna like film it on camera either for this channel or my vlog, but I started like taking all my equipment out and stuff and I just saw all the Christmas, or Christmas, not Christmas. The Halloween decorations and was like, you know what? This is a very personal moment. Like I want to just enjoy it by myself So instead I just put on a scary movie and um, I just yeah had some snacks and I started putting up decorations over a few hours and it was a really fun time So I'm not gonna be doing like a dedicated video on my Halloween decorations just because there's not really enough to make a full video But I will throw in some clips you can see in the living room. I put up the floating Harry Potter Harry Potter, not Harry Potter, um, Harry Potter, Harry Potter candles that have been, I don't know about you guys, but they have been all over my socials, all over my algorithms. I just, that's all I see on TikTok. And I just, I had to have it. It just looks so good. I was worried that it was going to look corny and tacky, but honestly, they're kind of magical and it was so easy to put up. So I assumed that people just bought these candles and then they had to like rig the fishing wire by themselves But it actually comes like that. They're ready to go. It's already hung the way that it needs to go all you need to do is put in batteries and um, It comes with clear hooks. Yeah, it's it's super super simple I ended up just using tape because I didn't want those hooks to be stuck to my ceiling permanently I didn't want to rip off any paint. So I just used shipping tape and it was fine um, I will link the candles that I'm using in the description. I got a set of 12, but honestly, I wish that I would have opted for like a set of 20. It would have been nice to see a little bit more in this space and maybe like even kind of in my hallway or I don't know. I just feel like there isn't quite enough, but it's going to be enough for this year. I definitely think once Halloween ends and we see all of those Halloween decoration sales, I think I'm going to snag a couple more boxes of them. In the plant room... Um, I just honestly all I did was put up these lights that kind of outline this main area and I think the next thing that I'm gonna get I don't know if it's gonna happen this year but it's something that I was kind of thinking of I think I want to do those like battery operated um, flameless flickering candles so I started looking online for different ones and the reviews were so like mixed and I just couldn't decide I get really overwhelmed when I'm doing research on products that I should buy I'm much I much prefer people just telling me what to buy rather than me having to do the research myself um, So that is that I think that if I end up finding one that I like I think I'm gonna try and disperse a few inside of some of these greenhouses and on here so that you can kind of just see the little flickering of the lights and I thought that would be kind of cute I could put some like on my staircase put some on my living room shelf and just kind of disperse them everywhere so um, I'm not sure again I'm not sure if that's gonna happen this year but if you're looking for another idea to do that's really easy and safe I recommend those uh, but other than that I feel like I've gone pretty easy on the the decorations this year I usually have way more cobwebs up or just cobwebs up in general but I have found them to be such a pain in the butt to clean up. I just, I, first off, I don't like the way it feels on my hands. I'm like a really textural person. And so I don't know the way that, it, like, I don't, I, I can't describe the texture of it. I already have goosebumps just thinking about it, but I don't like the way cobwebs feel. And then removing them is also just a huge pain in my butt. So I'm not sure if cobwebs are going up this year. We'll see how I feel. Um, maybe the closer it gets to Halloween, the more I'll want to spookify the place. But that's what it looks like now. I just wanted to address that in the beginning because I had a lot of people suggest videos to me to do like a whole dedicated video on spooky decorations for your plant space and i just don't think i have enough up at the moment to like make a full video but anyway that is um what my my apartment looks like right now the things that i use will be linked in the description below and i will also link the flameless flickering candles that i have my eye on as well so anyway getting straight into this video uh as you can tell by the thumbnail we're doing october favorites and foes so i was just going to do a favorites video but i thought that it would be kind of on brand for october to both do my favorites and then ones that are kind of like spooking me out right now whether it's um 
it not doing well, the cosmetic damage, ones that are kind of not really stressing me out, but kind of just like giving me the ick right now. So we're gonna flip flop back and forth between a few really nice ones and a few not so nice ones. So I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I am just gonna get right into it and bring out the first one. First favorite on the list is going to be my Philodendron Soderini. I have kind of documented the growth of this on YouTube over the last few years. And I feel like it wasn't until this year that I've really noticed how big, not noticed, but I've really had some like incredible, incredible size growth. So it's not obviously as large as like a regular Soderoy. And my observation of this plant is that it's very, very difficult to get out of that juvenile uh, stage. It requires a lot. It cannot be neglected. And you have to really want to size it up. You have to like want to put in the work or else it's not going to do anything for you. But once you get into Cataphil and once you get leaves that are about this size, it's kind of smooth sailing from there, except it takes so long to size up. Like these leaves aren't like even massive. They're like barely as large as my hand. And I've had this for years. I've had this plant for a very, very long time. And you would think for as long as I've had it and for the conditions I've given it, the poles that I've given it, that it would be way larger by now. But honestly, it's kind of, it's kind of nice to be able to enjoy it um, progressively size up because it's just more friendly, apartment friendly, I guess I should say. But just watching this thing grow up and glow up has been such like an honor almost and i'm just like so happy that i stuck it through and i feel like i'm starting to like see the payoff now because every time a new leaf comes out which is very fast by the way i feel like this one just hardened off and it already has a new one on the way so i i'm gonna leave this out because i believe i'm just gonna chop this i am thinking i'm gonna chop this maybe after this video because it's already basically outgrown this pole it has it could grow maybe like two or three no, maybe two more leaves um, until it outgrows it, but it is a stacked pole and there's so many roots in here. Like it's just super, super happy and rooted in here. So what I'm gonna do is just chop it. I'm gonna chop it here, remove the top and get it re repotted and we're gonna start over. I did that with my Majestic recently and um, hasn't skipped a beat. So that's gonna be the next project. But yeah, the Soda Rainy, definitely, I wanted to open it with this just because I can't get over how beautiful the last few leaves have been lately. Like, they're just so silvery and just incredible. It's just everything I love about this plant. And it's it's been fun. It's been really, really fun to grow this. And I feel like right now the hobby is kind of, I'm not going to say inundated, but it's really, really been what I feel taken over by the Ethereum craze and the Ethereum hype and I agree that it's kind of a um it's an exciting time to be in the hobby because there's so many cool growers right now there's so many like amazing hybrids coming out and yeah it's I'm finding Ethereum like almost every single day that I'm just like oh, I think I kind of need that one yep that one too um but I think that I just, I want to always remember that like philodendrons have always been like my first love in this hobby and I know a lot of people don't like growing philodendron because of how much space it takes, especially with the moss poles. Some people hate how moss poles look. It's a little, it's harder to size up than Ethereum, I would say, in my opinion. I feel like Ethereum can size up so much faster than philodendron with way less effort, but there's something for me really satisfying about the challenge. I'll admit that I don't love the challenge for every philodendron. It has to be a philodendron that I really, really, really love. And I think over the years, I've really kind of understood which ones those are because no matter how long I've had it, I'm always excited to see a new leaf. I'm always super, super anxious to see how big it's gonna be. I'm always wanting to like put it in a spot where I can always see it and admire it. And this has been one of those. So yeah, this plant here is kind of a testament to my love for philodendron. And I hope that it's still kind of smooth sailing from here. And I would love to see it get even bigger. First plant on the faux list. You guys might be surprised to see it, but it's my fried egg. I think I repotted this on camera. I, I think I did, yeah, because I, har whoa. I harvested a bunch of corms. 
um, which I will show you in a different video. But um, the fried egg did fine after the repot, honestly. It didn't, it only dropped one leaf after that and it has like a bunch of new roots now and looks like basically fully acclimatized to this new pot. Sorry, I'm gonna try and show you without the glare, but you can kind of see like all of those new roots that have formed really did not throw a fit at all. The spooky part of it is that every leaf that has grown since then has been white. All freaking white. Three leaves in a row. So right now I'm using silica on it. Let me show you the one I'm using. I'm gonna turn down the lights a little bit just to, so I can show you guys this, but this is the silica I'm using right now. It's from the TPS brand. I know some people have been asking for an update on this. Um, and I think I briefly touched on it in a recent video, but I was telling you guys that like, I don't really like to give any solid review or recommendation on a product until I've been using it for like a full year. Um, but my observation of this was that it did not do great with my Ethereum with no drainage holes. Um, everything else, it was totally fine. My Elbow Epi has been just perfect since using this, even though there's not as much light in there as it was getting in a different XO. Obviously, I've been using, like I said, I've been using it on this fry deck. And so far, all of these like white leaves, not browning at all. Whereas before, I would have had, a because this is not the first white leaf I've ever had on the fry deck, but it's done this thing much faster where it just like browns and then it just turns to basically like a crispy nothing um so it's been several weeks now and these have not faded or turned brown at all like whatsoever i don't know if that is a testament to the mycorrhizal inoculants i don't know if it's a testament to the lights in here or what but um, I want to say that silica is playing a role in it. Um, my only concern right now is that in my experience, when a fried egg goes completely white like this, it's kind of almost always stayed white. I've never seen a fried egg that pushed white like this and then went back to it being like this. So I'm a little bummed and I'm not, I'm not great with like beheading alocasias and then having them regrow. Um, I've never had any luck at all growing an alocasia from basically a stump. I know people say it can be done if I just like chop right underneath like where all the growth is, but I just don't feel great about doing that. And this thing has gotten so big. I grew this from a corm and so I'm just like really sad. I'm genuinely like sad and like kind of stressed out about it. I do have some other corms that I can keep um, that do have like nice variegation, but this was my mother, you know, like this is the one that like I've babied since she was little and I thought that, I don't know, I thought that me and her were going to have like a nice long run. I really didn't see it reverting at all, um, just because it's always had a good balance of variegation and green and yeah, I guess I'm just like really, really surprised that this thing has gone all white. Um, now in all of these leaves, there are little, little touches of green. So on this leaf right here, you can see a bit of the green that's on this little edge here. And then on this one, a little splooch right there and a little bit like on the edges. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell. And then same with this one. This is the whitest of them all and this is the newest one. The only green I can see is along the leaf margin. I'm like, what is freaking happening here? I don't exactly know what the plan is. Um, I don't know what the plan is. So I'm leaving it as is. Um, I'm just gonna kind of see what happens. But if any of you guys have any, not suggestions for me, but maybe just like testaments to your experiences on like if you've ever seen a fry deck go completely white and then like go back to being like this or am I, do I just have like a white fry deck now? Um, because I already know that I'm not going to want to chop the top off of this. I would much rather just kind of like leave it as it is and then just use it for corms. I don't know. I'm really sad, but this is kind of why I'm not super, super into the variegated plants like I am with 
just regular um, non-variegated plants. It's just an added layer of stress. Non-variegated plants are just as beautiful in my opinion. And it's like, is it even worth all of the like heartbreak, you know, and the anxiety? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm not prepared right now to be like, I'm done with Fridex, no more for me. But there is a good chance I may just go back to growing one from a small corm and having that be my new mother plant and either just using this for corms or just giving it away completely. Spooky, I know, very, very scary, a very scary thought. So this is my first faux. Obviously, I still really love the fry deck. It's always, since it's been in my collection, it's been one that I just loved on so hard. But right now we're going through a time. I don't know if we're gonna ever make it out of this, but um, any thoughts, prayers, and advice is welcome. Next one on the friend and favorites list is, um, I've shown this one recently, but I'm gonna show it again. This is my Red Crystal Portali Hybrid. And um, I honestly, this has been a favorite since I've received it. I've, since seeing it, I knew that it was gonna be one that I just loved so much. The new leaf has just made my jaw drop, honestly. I know it's not very big. It hardens off so slowly. I, this hardens off almost as slowly as my VCI. It's been this color and this kind of like softness for what feels like weeks now and it's just still constantly expanding but it is gorgeous 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 also by the way this is from bunny um, my friend amanda i think she just sold a bunch of these in a pre-order with lauren and i don't know if lauren has any in the shop that's going to be ready but um just keep your eye out on the website keep an eye out for instagram i can guarantee you guys you will love this hybrid it is stunning it's so beautiful i just can't get over how much i love it it has the brightest red emergent leaf like brighter red than any other anthurium i've ever seen it's almost like it's like freaking on fire or something and then just as it hardens it just has this beautiful beautiful sort of like brownish green color and it is just so shiny the leaf is a bit thicker than i would say like a crystallinum and it is like super pebbly i don't know if you can tell if you can tell with this leaf but it has like that micro pebble and that's something that i just really really love in an in an anthurium you can even see it from the back how pebbly it is and it does lose the redness as it um you know kind of matures but it stays this color for a long time in my observation and this is one of the anthurium that really took well to being in lower humidity right away i didn't have this in like my tent ever i only had it in a low humidity low temp exo for a couple months when i got it and then i just moved it out cold turkey to the living room and it's been fine this one grew perfectly fine on my living room shelf and she is gorgeous i think i finally got the spider mite thing under control on this on this plant and i feel like i'm finally getting to enjoy the leaf that I have been wanting for so long because um, you know some of the older leaves like they went through a little bit of like I don't know kind of like a bumpy they went on a bumpy road um, to get here I was dealing with a bit of like the yellowing I got some of this yellowing after I used silica I don't know if that had anything to do with it or if it was just a coincidence but this leaf is just like my favorite right now i just can't stop looking at it every single day i have to touch it i have to admire it and i just i truly feel like as long as i can keep this happy this is probably gonna be one of like my favorite anthurium in my collection hands down um it's just the the color is everything it's not even really doing it justice on camera you have to see it in person everything from the texture the thickness of the leaf the color as it changes from like a brand new emergent leaf until it hardens like this it's really unlike any other anthurium that i have in my collection i feel um and i i would say that this is probably top three anthurium right now if not number one i'm really really sad that this one is on my foes list because it's one of my favorite hoyas but i i'm just genuinely confused by this plant right now because it was doing completely fine. I featured it in a video, I think sometime in September, and it was Gorgina. It was like flawless. And then one day it pushed out, I think you can kind of see remnants of it right here. 
it pushed out two flowers in a row and ever since then all of the leaves have become so extremely dehydrated and crinkled and soft it won't it won't perk back up the roots look totally healthy like they look fine they look the way that they've looked since i've had this plant and i've always had this plant in no drainage it's been living in my in my hoya cabinet nothing has changed the only common denominator that i've seen or the only thing i can maybe guess the reason of is those flowers ever since those flowers came in it's like it's been on its deathbed and i can't perk it back up so I'm a little nervous. I don't know how I can get this thing looking kind of like plump again. My guess is that I'm gonna have to completely reroot it. I don't know why, I, I really don't because the roots are fine and I can even see some brand new roots forming even that are like really recent. So yeah, unfortunately this one is on my foes list right now just cause I, it was kind of just like this mysterious downhill turn. I mean, it's kind of maybe needed a haircut for a while now anyway, so maybe this is just a good time or a good chance to shave it down a bit, get it looking a little bit more ruly rather than unruly. Um, but I'm not looking forward to rerooting this. I'm not, I don't have a ton of experience rooting Hoyas, especially Hoyas that are this big, because I'm not trying to like single node this. I would like to keep as long of a uh, stem as I can. What's up with the charades? But I just don't know how it's gonna fare as like an unrooted cutting for an X amount of time until the roots come. My method with this one, I think, is gonna be to do it in a, like a massive two cup dome method. Basically get it into an enclosed system so that it's as humid as possible and I'm gonna stick it in my tent. So I'm gonna just blast it with light, blast it with heat, blast it with humidity, and hopefully that's enough to kind of like keep it strong enough so that all the leaves don't fall while it's rerooting. But I'm just so sad about this, I really am. Like the leaves used to be so like thick and plump and now you can see all of the like wrinkled venation like it's just so wrinkly it's so soft like i should not be able to bend it like this there's no way when this was healthy that i'd be able to do this it's so weird it's so weird and so spooky so unfortunately we're having trouble in callista par callista Phila paradise <laughs> um but hopefully i can get things up and running soon because i don't want to lose her this next one is another bunny plant and I wasn't even going to include it in this favorites video but if you watched Alice's last video of her mishmash at North Shore Tropicals, she showed the unboxing of the pre-order that Lauren did for Canadian plant orders and um, inside of this box was the Luxurians Ralph Lyon and Fort Sherman. I'm going to pop in a photo that I took here. I was stunned i was floored i couldn't believe uh, what i was looking at i was shocked to know i had this plant i already had it and um it's this little guy here so i have said before that i believe that no matter how pretty a mother plant is um or the parent plants are it seems like people that are hybridizing things with luxes like crystal lux mag lux ace lux they all, to me, kind of look similar. Like if they didn't have tags on them, I wouldn't know who's who, honestly. They all have very, very minor um, differing details about them that it would be hard to distinguish like who is who. But this one, you can't mistake it. It has the darkest leaf. It has the most like almost like really narrow leaf. I feel like a lot of the Lux hybrids really take after like the Lux roundness and that Lux heart shape. Whereas this one really got the traits from the um, Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman. And it's just this like long sinister leaf that has like the brightest red sinus and it just looks, oh my gosh. It's probably the most beautiful anthurium that I've ever seen in person. And um, I was so jealous of everyone that got one, but I had to remind myself that I have one already and um, it's a wee baby still. <laughs> and me and Alice were like, after we saw that video, cause I think Alice's was in like a two inch pot, mine is still in this little parfait cup. After we saw those plants in person, we're like, okay, 
time to size up the pots, time to give this thing a little love. And I was gonna repot mine into a bigger one because it's like in a tree fern fiber pond mix. It's been happy in here, but I think the reason that it is sizing up so slowly is because it's always been in a tiny little sort of like propagation cup. So Alice, I think already repotted hers. I think she repot hers the day that we came back from the shop because we were like, hey we want one too we had like mad fomo and i was gonna repot mine but then this new leaf was still coming out so i didn't want to touch it but you can see like how just beautiful um the plant is even in this emergent leaf it's just so dark so narrow and i just love the sinus i can't get over the sinus and how just like bright and distinct it is i think that this is my favorite lux hybrid of all time both in just Amanda's collection and just in general. Anybody who's ever hybridized a Lux, I feel like these are the ones. These are the ones to have. So if you guys ordered one through Lauren or if you've ever ordered one through Bunny, just know that you have such a good plant and I'm so, so grateful to have this and I'm definitely going to be keeping a more watchful eye on it. I'm going to try and baby it. As soon as this leaf hardens, she's getting, she's getting a bigger pot. <laughs> My next foe is this nasty 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 mother um this is what is supposed to be a philodendron holtonianum and i got this from alice as a birthday gift i think it was la my last birthday or two birthdays ago and it has always just looked like road grass it hates me i feel like i've done almost everything for it and it just doesn't just doesn't like me. Just doesn't like me. Alice took, I think she took the bottom cutting of the plant she gave me and hers turned into this massive, ginormous thing that I don't even think she has anymore because it got so big. And mine has always just looked like these little sharp strings of grass. That's it. I never get the ears. I never get any leaf larger than this. This is the extent of my, uh, my success with the whole Tanyanum. I think that, I think, Amanda sent me a bunch of stump cuttings and I think one of them was a whole ton of yenum. Let me try and find it. I just beheaded my leader red. I was waiting for this leaf and I just beheaded it. That's great. Um, so I think, I think this is a whole ton of um, It's much bigger than any of the props that I've ever been able to get from my main plant. And it's like a lot wider. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this isn't even a Holti, but that's what I, I think she sent me a photo of it and it kind of looked like a Holti. But anywho, my love hate relationship with this is kind of nearing its end. And I think the only reason I have kept it for this long is not only reason, I have two reasons. One, sentimental meaning. I got it as a gift from Alice because she knew that I had it on my wish list. Two, competitive reasons, pride reasons. I'm just like, I almost just want to like size it up to a decent size and then once it gets to that size, like just get on an airplane and just like drop it from as freaking high up as I can just to show it like how much I hate it. What more do you want from me? I've given it like the, some of the most prime real estate. I have changed the pole multiple times. I've changed the vessel multiple times. Just hates everything and anything I do. Thank goodness this one is next on the list to lift my spirits back up. So this is what used to be my massive, massive um, Philodendron Gloriosum Zebra. Um, I featured it in so many videos in, I think it was 2021. No, hold on, we're in 2023. I think 20, last year, I think last year and 2021, I would have showed it a bunch of times in favorites videos because it was like the most glorious, beautiful, gloriosum in the world. It was like my dream gloriosum. I couldn't even believe I had this thing in my house. And then it succumbed to spider mites and it was just all downhill from there. So. What I did was just chop it into a bunch of nodes. Some of the some of the um, stumps didn't make it. I sold two of them, and then this is the one that I've kept. And it's so cute. It's so nice to see a little baby version of the plant that I had because when I received it, it was already kind of a good size. It was probably like, I wanna say it was like this big already. Like I had a good foundation to start with, but Lately, I just feel like there's something like super special about growing plants from just teeny tiny stumps 
and watching them glow up like the relationship that i have with my fry deck you know that one was grown from a bulb and it's like i feel like i've seen so many like chapters and phases of it that it just yeah becomes like your baby and so i am happy to be able to get a second chance with this thing um i'm hoping that i can keep that really like stripey brightness i do feel like there is a correlation between like warmth and light with how veiny the gloriosums can be this one has been growing both in a prop box and then in my tent so i'm anxious to see how it's gonna look once it's i mean right now it's sitting out here i only just put it out there like a few days ago yeah so i i guess only time will tell but for right now it looks really cute it's starting to get more round now because my other when this one was really big it was so round it had overlapping lobes it was just the most precious thing ever so um yeah she's growing up but i'm glad to have this again because i do have i have two other forms of gloriosum in my collection right now so i have the angry alice some of you guys know what that is and then i have the dark form and i think those are the only two i have but this one was hands down my favorite and i was really sad when it died and so yeah it's just kind of nice to be able to start over and with a plant that's not so overwhelmingly large uh, i almost prefer having my plants be smaller now just because it's easier to take care of and yeah i'm just excited to see how much this one is going to grow i'm sad this one is in my faux roster this is my amanda hybrid so she hybridized why do i always forget what this is a philodendron scott morianum with a 69686 so this is amanda's like original hybrid and i grew this one from a little tiny tiny baby this was one of the first leaves that i had on it this guy down here this one severely needs a repot it is always freaking dry i don't know if you guys who have this hybrid too um this is probably one of my thirstiest philodendron it drinks water like a hot damn but um the reason this one is on my foes list right now is because it has the craziest amount of spider mites you've ever seen in your life look how spooky and nasty this new leaf looks it is getting bigger the you know the leaf size obviously is getting bigger it's getting more pronounced lobes and things but the spider mites it's just insane and with the spider mites, there's also like a lot of excess extra floral nectaries. I find that this one pushes out a lot of it. I've never owned a Scott Morianum. I have owned a 69686. I didn't have any um, EFN issues with that plant. I don't know if the Scott Morianum is, very, is a very EFN heavy plant, but this one pushes out EFN like crazy. So I think the plan with this one is just going to be to cut off some leaves because this one does not drop leaves. <laughs> as unhappy as it's been with spider mites and just like consistently drying out, um, doesn't drop any leaves. It still has the original leaf that it came with when she sent it to me um, all that time ago. And I think it's just going to be easier to get a hold of the spider mite situation with less leaves. Like honestly, I might even just chop this back down to like nothing. Like just get rid of all the leaves and just you know start back with a one leaf cutting at least it'll be a top cutting and i should still have the same size leaf um on the new on the new one that comes in but that's been my method for the last i would say year or at least the last like six or seven months i'm just like violently chopping off leaves left and right because it's just way way easier to get a hit, like a hold of the pest situation so yeah that's what i'm gonna do this for but i just wanted to show you like how like disgusting this new leaf looks i hate it i hate looking at it bless lauren's overly generous heart for the fact i even have a gigas in my collection again i have owned a gigas many gigas over the last few years it's been one of my favorite sort of long leaf philodendron mostly because of the shape of it it has like a really sad looking eeyore leaf but it also has a very 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 dark color naturally that is much darker than the milano darker than the glorious way darker than um the micans well it could be as dark as the micans but it's like almost black like a purplish black 
it's crazy when it gets older that is it still has a very like green color but i would say that this color specifically is kind of unlike a lot of the like velvety philodendron that we like growing but anyway yeah i've had so many of them and they've either one like literally walked out of this apartment and just vanished like i need to call like unsolved mysteries and figure out what the hell happened or two they just died I haven't had really great luck with the gigas before like my I think it was the first gigas I owned or maybe the second one It was growing really nicely I think one of the largest leaves that I had was maybe like this big or maybe even bigger and I was just so proud of it And yeah, that's the one that just like Left just decided to like pack up and run away from home <laughs> Since then Lauren has given me many cuttings. She gave me a massive cutting from her mother plant it was like this big of a leaf. It was humongous. That one died. Then she gave me one from a prop box. That one died. And then now I have this one. So she literally potted it for me. She put it on the pole for me and she acclimatized it and got it out of like the prop box for me and just did all the heavy lifting. And then once it was like, you know, fully rooted into here, she was like, here time to fly the coop you take it now so i have not touched it since then i haven't moved it out of the cup i haven't done anything to it i have just put it in that exo and left it alone and um, it's grown two leaves in my care so far so obviously this is the newest one it's still um kind of expanding a bit but i think that's the extent of the size but this right here just reminds me of like the reason why I fell in love with the gigas. I feel like it's such an underloved plant and I don't know why. I think it has all of the really great features that other plants have that are really loved like the Milano. And it's just so much, I would say, easier to grow than the Milano once it gets going and once you can secure it and it doesn't run away. <laughs> I'm still so upset about that plant disappearing because I really, really loved it and I, I invested so much effort and time into it and then it's just, yeah, it's just gone. I'm not gonna let it go, I'm holding a grudge. I am grateful that I've gotten like a fourth, fifth, sixth chance with this because um, yeah, it is one of my favorite climbing philodendrons still. Uh, Lauren has a couple, I think she has like three or four super mature ones growing in the shop right now and they're amazing. They're, they're so pretty. They get even nicer as they mature. I like the color more as it matures and I'm just excited to like hopefully grow mine to that size and hers are just growing out in like regular well i wouldn't say like ambient conditions like it's growing in the shop on obviously but like it's more humid and warm in there than it is here but otherwise like there have been times where the gigas has literally like flopped all the way over or it's like growing on nothing but the leaves are still sizing up so i have faith that like once it gets a little bit bigger than this i might have some more speed in getting it much larger or at least back to where i started with my last one but yeah i really wanted to emphasize some of the climbing philodendron just because i don't know i feel like they're getting overlooked right now with the whole ethereum craze and for any like philodendron lovers that are here i just want you to know i'm with you i am still here with you i have a love for them that i don't think an ethereum could ever do for me i do love them both separately in their own ways but i think at heart I will always be a philodendron girl. Next on the foes list is my ring of fire. Really for no other reason than the fact that I'm just kind of over it. I thought that this could be a good caramel marble dupe for me, but it doesn't quite do it. Besides this leaf that got like stuck in the catafil for the longest time that has like this really nice sectoral variegation, it still does not have the variegation that's like nice enough that I'm like, I love this plant so much. Um, but on that note, I don't even think that I have the caramel marble on my wish list anymore, more so because of the growth pattern. I like, I'm imagining like if this plant were like 10 times bigger, I wouldn't know where to put it. And um, not that it's like sizing up fast or anything, but I'm just, like completely out of love with this thing and it kind of flew under the radar when i was purging plants but i just wanted to feature it one more time again it's not a plant that like is like acting up for me or being you know being naughty but i just i thought that it could fill a void that 
maybe would never be filled because I don't see a caramel marble ever being in my budget. Something is leaking in the sink. It's driving me crazy. Our kitchen sink has been broken for ages. It just got fixed by the handyman, but now it's just leaking. Our landlord ordered a different sink altogether, which I'm so excited about because I hate our nozzle right now, um, but it's not gonna come until next month. So right now we're dealing with a leaky, a leaky, leaky sink. Okay, so anyway, um, this is one that I'm just gonna get rid of. I have no remorse. Um, at one point, I did think it was pretty cool, and I think I was just trying to convince myself that it could be a legit um, caramel marble dupe but it's not, and that's just the bottom line. Um, I know some people really, really love this plant. They love the variegation of it over the caramel marble, but it's just not doing it for me. And especially with like these issues of whatever these fungal spots or EFN spots are, I think that people are always gonna debate about whether it is fungal or whether it is EFN. To me, it's just not the vibe and it's just taking up space that can be used for other things. So this is the last time you guys are gonna see it on this channel. This one, honestly, during the purge, it was just like camouflage. He was just like this, minding his own business, not making eye contact, but I totally missed it. But I easily would have snatched this up and been like, you're gone. Um, but at least I can show it in this video as a foe. Um, but yeah, anyway, this one's gonna go and no regrets. I'm so happy to be able to show you guys a forgetty a forget why can't I talk? A forgetty eye that looks like a forgetty eye. So this is the um, one of the seedlings, or maybe this was a clone from Alice's plant. I, I can't remember. I think maybe this is a cutting from her plant. But yeah, this is a dark forgetty eye. Um, don't mind the worm castings cup that it was in but it's just starting to look like the forgetty eye that i missed so much in my collection i had a really really nice one at some point and i'll throw in a photo here it was probably the one of the most gorgeous anthurium i had ever laid eyes on and i was floored and shocked when this came in as an import and i was even more floored and shocked when it took a crap and died. It had the most beautiful and insane emergent leaf. And even when it was hardened off, I was just like, how is this a real plant right now? Like, how is this in my collection? I wish it would have lived so that I could have like selfed it or hybridized it with something because the genes on that one were just immaculate. But this is a nice second best, I guess. It's not quite like dark, dark like my other one, but it's not the silver venation. I'm not a huge fan of the silver vein forgetty eye. I much prefer the ones with like the muted green or the muted, um, what is it? M muted green? Yeah, muted green color, or no, neon green, not muted. Muted and neon. <laughs> so yeah, you can see that it's flowering. This is actually the second time it's pushed an inflow. I can't remember what I did with the first inflow. Here's the thing, I recently, pollinated my indo Papi hybrid i'll throw in a photo of the plant i'm talking about here so i collected pollen from a plant one day and i don't remember who it was i just remember that i put pollen in my freezer and i think i think it was from this plant because I, I just can't think of anyone else that it would have been from i don't think that i would have really taken the time to um to collect pollen from a crystal mag, which is one anthurium in my collection that is just like always pushing an inflow. Um, but I think for sure if this one had pollen, I probably would have collected it. Now the hybrid, if it does take, I don't think that this Pappy hybrid with this Forgetty, Forgetty Eye is gonna be like the most insane hybrid. I really don't think so. They're very similar in color already. And I, I think the Pappy, vi the Pappy vibes, Pappy um, genes are just gonna be so strong and like, you know, I don't think there's gonna be any like closed sinus or anything. So it's more just an experiment just to see if it took. But anyway, yeah, I'm glad to finally have like a normal looking forgetty eye in my collection because I feel like I've struggled so much this year and last year with keeping a forgetty eye nice. And I was just at Alice's house the other day. I dropped off some a bag of watermelons to her. And um, she has two really large forgetty eyes in her collection and they are insane. I don't know if she's just like um, numb to it or it's just normal for her now, but like the 
the sinus on a really mature forgetty eye to me is just wild it looks so unreal and sinister and like it just like bulges out so much it's so violent and like aggressive and i love it and i'm just hoping that i can get my forgetty eye to be that big because i can already see it's gonna have kind of a similar um venation that hers has that i really really like um this one's actually still soft and still hardening off but yeah it's been really great in low humidity it's grown so much better than any forgetty eye that i've had in like a higher humidity condition and I just love that with my Anthurium growing in ambient conditions now, I don't deal with any fungal, like fungal issues that I was dealing with before. So it was a hard road getting to where I am now. And I feel like I feel like I couldn't have done it without the support of Amanda, who's really like pushed me. And she always tells me like how proud she is of me for not like going back and just putting everything back into greenhouses. But like honestly, no regrets. I have dealt with the comments over the last basically two what two years of people being like you can't grow anthurium in low humidity and like why are you putting your plants through the suffering why not just put it back into a greenhouse like you're trying to make it do something that it doesn't want to do well you know what it's doing it okay and amanda does it so i'm gonna do it too but yeah forgetty eye we're back in the forgetty eye club people and i could not be happier the last foe on our list is one that honestly i am really contemplating also getting rid of the only reason i haven't is because i still really love this plant so this is the philodendron serpents and i just i i can't i cannot figure it out like it just doesn't i mean well of course it's pushing out a new leaf right now but it doesn't grow very fast and it's just like i don't know it's always pushing out these like kind of like sickly looking leaves. I just find that growing this has been really, really difficult. All of the new leaves that I've gotten are just these microscopic, tiny little things. The plant that I started with had a leaf that was like this big. It was freaking huge. It didn't acclimatize well. And um, once it did acclimatize, it just pushed out these like runty looking <laughs> leaves. And it's just sparking no joy. It's really not. I love the serpents for like the big mature leaves for those super, super hairy petioles. Is this a serpent or is this my squam? Oh no, because I had both. I do think, I think this is my serpents. Not sure how much longer I'm willing to invest in this, to be honest. It's just kind of taking up space and it. when I look at it, I just get more like icked out if anything. But I just keep trying to remind myself that I do love this plant. I love the way it looks. I love the texture. I love the darkness of the leaves, the sunken in, sunken in venation, the petioles, the color of the petioles. There's so many things to like about the serpents. Like, let me show you like a really nice serpents photo. Like, why can't I have that? Why? Why can't I have that? I feel like I've given it everything. I've gone to both drainage, no drainage, greenhouse, non-greenhouse. Um, right now it's in no, or right now it has drainage, but I just, I can't figure it out, you guys. I've done like different kinds of fertilizer. I've done the CalMag thing. It's been inoculated. I don't know what more it wants from me. I am kind of thinking that I might throw it back in my greenhouse. But the thing is, is I don't want this to be a plant that I grow indefinitely in the greenhouse. Because if it's only going to grow well in a greenhouse, I don't think that I can keep it. I don't think it's going to be for me. All of the plants that I have in my collection, I want to be able to have the flexibility to move it wherever I want. That's just my outlook when I'm thinking of the plants that I'm going to keep long term. I don't really want to have any plants that I'm just like, it can never outgrow this XO or it always has to stay in the tent because for me that's not realistic when plants are growing and getting bigger. So I, I, I am gonna hold on to this one for longer. I'm not quite at my wits end just yet. I'm annoyed, but not at my wits end. I think if anything, I'll give it another year, which I think is plenty of time. Another year, if by like next summer, I don't see like a big growth spurt, which is when most of my plants will have like gone through like a crazy amount of growth, I think I'm just gonna have to get rid of it because I, this does zero, does jack crap for me. So anywho, that's the last foe and I think for good reason. Last but certainly not least is this just <clears throat> yum yum. I, 
I don't even know what to say. <laughs> so this is my RA5 Swamp Bunny from Amanda. For the longest time, I thought maybe I had mixed up the IDs or something because this looks nothing like the other RA5 Swamp she gave me. It doesn't look to me anything like Alice's. It doesn't look like Lauren's. It just looks, it's like if a Gigas was an Ethereum. Like, does this not remind you of like a Gigas? It's got like that really sad Eeyore leaf like the sinus is just so scrunched and it's just so long like I I'm stunned so what I should have done is grab the other RA5 swamp and compared it this is the other RA5 swamp that Amanda recently sent me because I was saying how this one was being a biatch which it was for the longest time all of the new leaves kept melting off didn't want to acclimatize to like lower temps lower light um, so she sent me another one as like a backup but how is this how is this the same plant at all it has such a different like leaf texture the venation yes very much the same um sinus is the same kind of the leaf shape but to me it just doesn't look like the same plant at all like this one is much more like bolate whereas this one is just so smooth i can only compare it to like a gigas leaf to me this looks like a gigas <laughs> A gigas if it were an anthurium i'm gonna feel really freaking dumb if this is an ra5 swamp but i don't know what else it would be but now that it's kind of gotten out of this like phase where it's done throwing a tantrum so cute look at the twins they're adorable this leaf color is just everything to me i i do think that this is probably another favorite of mine that i've gotten from amanda next to the red crystal port i i am so 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 happy to have this one and i hope like as the leaves get larger that it still keeps this this same look and doesn't kind of grow out of it because i would just die if i had like a massive leaf that looked like this and i think this this would be a really fun one to kind of cut and trade with lauren and alice because from my recollection, theirs does not look like this at all, and I just have a feeling that they would love a piece of this guy. So as soon as we get our bearings right now, I'm really not chopping my anthuriums as much as Alice is because I'm growing mine outside of a greenhouse. She's growing, I would say, most of her anthurium in a greenhouse, and for me, my priority right now is just getting them established, getting them comfortable, because it's been a long freaking road of getting my anthurium out of greenhouses and so i would say maybe by next summer i should be ready to give a good chop to a lot of them because i need to repay alice she's cut so many of the amanda plants for me and i've given her like one so that doesn't seem fair but anyway i wanted to close it off with this guy because i think right now this one is my favorite favorite like if i had to choose one favorite for october it's gonna be this one. Anyway, you guys, that's gonna wrap it up for October uh, favorites and foes. Maybe I should just call it friends and foes because these are my friends and I have some foes. Um, or if it should be something that I only do in October, I don't know. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it, irregardless. <laughs> I know that's not a word, okay, but I like saying it. So anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'm excited for more uh, October content. I'm not gonna have as many like spooky stories to tell this year because I don't really have any more. I have, I have a few, but not enough to do like a whole series on it ongoing every year. But I do have some other repot and chat things that are spooky related that is coming up in the queue. So hope you guys are all buckled in for October. Get those decorations up and um, I will see you in the next one.